Hey everybody, Matumbo here. Welcome back to the channel. And today we are playing some more historic here on Magic Arena. And we have another Blood Sun Lotus Field deck that we are looking to play. And I'm super stoked about this one. Uh, but real quick though, before we hop into today's deck as always, if you enjoy the video and enjoy the channel, please like, comment, subscribe, check out all the cool links down below, and hit that bell icon to be notified of when we uh, put out new videos. So, like I said, let's just hop right into this deck. And we are playing Orvar's Wind. So, again, we're trying to focus on some of the newer cards from Kaldime, and we are today focusing on Orvar. Um, Orvar, if you're not familiar with, he is a 4-mana, 3-3 three, three legendary creature. He is a shapeshifter, he's a changeling, so he has all creature types. Um, but it says whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, if it targets one or more other permanents you control, create a token that's a copy of those, uh, or of one of those permanents. And then it also says whenever a spell or an ability an opponent controls causes you to discard this card, create a token that's a copy of target permanent. So it's kind of cool if they thought sees this out of your hand, you get to essentially copy something that's in play, even if it could potentially even be a land. So um, could help with the ramping. This is just a really cool card overall. It is mythic, so this does make the deck a little more expensive in that in that aspect. But this is going to be a lot of fun. So uh, again, if you're not familiar, Blood Sun is going to shut all of the lands off of their non-mana abilities. Uh, we get to draw a card when this comes into play. So uh, Lotus Field, in combination with that, it, this is basically just a land that says, comes into play. Um, Tap to add three mana of any color. So really busted because Blood Sun's going to get rid of the first three lines of text, the Hexproof, the Enders of the Battlefield tapped, and the having, to, having to sacrifice. So again, one of my favorite combos on Arena, in Historic, in Magic. It's just, it's fun to ramp that way, right? Um, you don't feel as cheesy, you know, since you're not ramping out with like Explores and uh, Growth Spirals and stuff, but still pretty it can be pretty busted with the right draws so what are we really doing we're well again we're trying to focus on orvar's ability of whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell that targets one or more other permanents you control so basically we are able to target any of our permanents uh in play really with a couple cards right we have four copies of teferi's time twist uh two mana it's an instant it exiles a permanent we control we get to return it to the battlefield under our control at the beginning of the next end step. If it was a creature, it gets a plus and plus one counter. That part's irrelevant. We're just trying to target it with this because if we get to exile it, as soon as we target it with exiling, we're gonna get a we're gonna get a token copy of whatever that card is. So if we use this to maybe ramp uh, or copy a mindstone, um, we're gonna get a copy of mindstone, and then that mindstone is gonna come into play tapped. Or I'm sorry, it's gonna come into play at the end of the turn. We also have this really cool card a um, long time ago from, uh, what was this, Rivals of Ixalan, I think it was. Um, but this is a release the wind, it's a three man instant. It basically does almost the same thing, it's just slightly different, right? It says, Exile target non land permanent. For as long as that card remains exiled, its owner may cast it without paying its mana cost. So this is, it kind of works the same way, but we can immediately bring it back into play. Um, we don't necessarily have to uh, cast it if we don't want to. We can leave it out a couple turns, um, but typically you're going to you're going to exile a, a, a permanent that you have in play or a non-land permanent. Uh, as soon as we target it with this, uh, Orvar says it's going to get a copy. And then so we're going to get a copy of one of our, our bomb spells. And then we get to remove that card that we're exiling. And then if it's one of our bombs, we maybe just recast it. So we go essentially from having one copy of it to two copies of it. Um, yeah, and then uh, other than that, we'll, we'll get to the the uh, other spells in a second, but we have two copies of Anger of the Gods and we have three copies of Storm's Wrath. Again, we need removal because this deck does um, tend to want to have a lot of mana in play. So we do need to survive till those turns, even though we are ramping with Mind Stone and Blood, Sun and Lotus. Uh, we also do have four copies of Mythos of Luna. This is really cool. Again, this works really great with Orvar because not only are we targeting with this to make a copy of it, which is going to give us a copy, this card also gives us a copy. So we're going to go from one copy of something to three copies of something. And those somethings are going to be pretty, pretty devastating depending on which ones we go. And so let's real quickly talk about those two cards that were. One of which is, again, 
one of my favorites. Um, and I know a lot of you guys enjoy this card and enjoy seeing this card. Haphazard Bombardment. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, choose four non-enchantment permanents, put counters on them, and then at the end step, uh, basically destroy one of those at random. So again, if this is in play and we Mythos of Aluna this card, um, we get to make a copy of it with the targeting ability from Orvar, and then another one comes into play. So then we have three of these in play. Three of these in play is pretty devastating. Um, that's essentially 12 permanents with counters on them, um, which is going to whittle them down really quickly. And then, and I really doubt it's going to be get to a point where they actually have 12 permanents in play when this happens. You know, they might have like six or seven, and then immediately they have half, you know? So that should just end the game in itself. Uh, we also have four copies of Kiora Besta Sea God, as this card is ridiculous. And when we're just doing exactly what I mentioned earlier with Orvar uh, and copying this with Mythos, we're going to have all the untargetable hexproofing 8-8s. We're going to tap all of the permanents. And we can do this in, <clears throat> we can do this to just like in stacks. There's just so many cool ways you can do, uh, you can do with this. So obviously create an 8-8, eight, eight, chapter one, chapter two, tap them down for an extra turn. And then chapter three, gain control of target permanent. Now what's really cool about this <clears throat> is if you go into full control mode, so you wanna make sure you set an upkeep stop, even though this does happen on your draw step, but you just wanna make sure you have that stop so you can get ready to do it. You stop on your upkeep, then go into full control mode, go into your draw step, draw your card, this triggers, and then when this when chapter three triggers to gain control of something, you go ahead and target whatever you're gain, you're gonna gain control of. And then again with Orvar in play, and you don't even necessarily need Orvar, but that really just puts it over the top. But what with this on the stack, you can Teferi's time twist, or you can release the wind, get get it out of play, bring it right back in, and then again with Orvar in play, we're gonna get an additional copy. So that's going to be really great synergy. They're going to be doing a lot of powerful, a lot of crazy things. And I really, <clears throat> I really expect that our opponents <clears throat> are going to actually quit a lot of the time. So yeah, this is the deck again. We are playing 25 lands and that is the deck. So again, Orvar's Wind, that's the deck. We're featuring Orvar the all form the all formed. So let's hop into the games. We will see you guys at the wrap up. All right. We're going to do it. We're going to copy. We're going to control. And we're going to do one of those other C words. Get our opponent to concede. Yep, that's a good one. <laughs> All right, so let's let's make for a quick 7 and 0. All right, I think our webcam out of focus. Um, I think we have to keep that, right? When it goes first, I don't really have any early plays, and I think we're gonna. Ooh, high risk, high reward, right? High risk, high reward. We have two draws to draw one land. I think we have to play that as a red source just in case. Come on, deck one time. Yes. It's tap though. Oh. That's brutal. Road spiral. Oh man. How original. All right, well. Gonna grow spiral again. Oh, you. You actually just quenched us. Okay. All right, well, we do get to Blood Sun next turn. Perfect. 
All right. Am I sure? Absolutely sure. I pack ambusher. All right. We're doing this, huh? We're doing this. All right, well. All right, do we want to phase this out? I think we want to draw another card, though. Oh, that is a lot of damage. Let's get lucky. Not lucky. Not lucky. We are at two life. for everything right get some creatures no 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 creatures creatures ah we lost because we we lost because we didn't hit creatures but on the bright side we did get to see the power of this deck all right rod gains you have defeated us but we will take the knowledge of what our deck can do into the next game. I have I have a good feeling. All right, next game. Finish him. Oh, finish him. I hit the wrong button. We need to hydrate, but we'll fit we'll finish him at the end of this game. Right? All right, let's go. Um yeah, we're going to keep this. Looks pretty good. We just have to know that we're going to draw a Lotus Field. All right? Sometimes you just have to know that you're going to draw those things. Okay, so they are on a uh, Bant Control deck. If we can hit this lotus field, ba boom, the lotus field. Oh, search for Ascanta. Do we want to search for Ascanta? Can we? Does how does this work? Uh, I don't think it actually worked the same way. So we could. Could copy the Blood Sun. Don't necessarily want to do that. So I think we are. I think we're just gonna get a little bit of card draw value here. Um, let's do it again. Okay, well, we are trying to draw land. I mean, we did that specifically to draw land. Uh, and if we don't draw land after three cards, that's a little unfortunate. Aww. Aww. Ah, uh, well, we wouldn't have drawn a land uh, for two more turns. All right, we definitely drew a land there. We are definitely going to get the ball rolling here. Really don't care what we hit.
it is unfortunate that we can't target the search for his Kanta or, or put a counter on it because of the fact that um, it's an enchantment. Okay, that was a good hit. Four, four lands there. I like that. I really like this. Yep, and we're just gonna we're just gonna let this play out. I think the fact that we're constantly hitting lands here is a really good sign for our uh, for us versus our opponent. Tutelage, okay. I don't really feel like that's gonna do anything. So next turn we actually get to do all kinds of stuff, right? We get to copy um, really anything. I mean, we have plenty of cards left. We're probably gonna Storm's Wrath to get rid of this Ashok just because it's borderline annoying. So let's go ahead and get in. Put them down to 16. Let's go ahead and do this. this has been a nightmare. And do we want to put them down to two land? I feel like that might be a better plan, but we have the potential to kill them next turn. If we just copy um, well, okay so we could do two things right all right so we're gonna we're gonna release the wind the haphazard bombardment we're gonna replay it we're gonna target all their lands and we are going to Blink this friend out. We'll get another token. This will represent lethal. I feel like as long as we don't hit Fable Passage, we're good. Okay, so they're not going to be able to Wrath here. Oh, actually, they can flip. Oh, but it comes into play tapped. Because of the Kiora Best of Sea God. All right. And we're going to... I mean, they, they could have a life gain spell. Oh. Interesting, interesting. Well. Let's go ahead and keep it going. Oh, that was a beautiful hit. Oh, beautiful hit. Yeah, with us with us not hitting that fable passage and that fable passage just sitting out there, not being able to do anything because of the blood sun is beautiful. We're gonna be able to take one of their lands. Uh oh. Something's happening over there. And I think we will be drawing with the Mind Stone at the end of their turn. We don't need nine mana. I think they're roping. This is a hard spot to be in. I mean, I've... I feel like everybody at one point has been on the receiving end of a uh, haphazard bombardment lock. It's no fun to be on the receiving end, but it's definitely fun to be on the giving end of it. No lies, no lies. All 
right. Ropey McRoperson. I mean, this is all just waiting for us to get milled twice, right? They lose priority. It goes to our turn. That's pretty funny. I mean, we'll take the blue because we could use the blue. And then we get to play the rope game the final time, right? I mean, we need to give him the little sad hedron. Aww. You both hate and love to see the rope, right? The salty rope. Uh, Anka Monkey. Unfortunate you had to you had to be like that. But hey, like we said at the beginning, finish him. We did. Good game. Alright, we've begun a, we've begun the streak. And we keep the streak alive. We are on a streak of one. We've had a bunch of follows lately on uh, Twitch, which has been awesome. We haven't um, really been streaming any Magic lately, but we've been streaming a bunch of other games. We are looking for more people to play Among Us on uh, most likely Saturday nights. So join the Discord if, you, uh, if you're looking to play with us. You go first. I think we can keep this. This is almost exactly where we want to be. We just need a payoff and or a lotus field. All right, well. We're against the stupid ghost pirates. I mean, this isn't a ghost pirate, but we know that it's there. We know the ghost pirates are there. Do we play? Yeah, I'm just going to play this out. They want to lofty denial this or spell pierce it, whatever they want to do. All right, they let it live. The blood sun will shine forever. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. What a horrible magic card. All right. Now we are going to try to release the win that. Oh, wow. Sweet. Did not expect that to land, so we just got rid of two of their card draw spells. That's really good. Really good. Um, you know what? No, oh, we're good. This will probably get lofty denial, right? Have to imagine. 
Gonna get quenched. We will definitely pay for a quench. I think they forgot what Mindstone did. I legitimately think that's what happened there. So is that the only counter they have in their hand is Quench? More curiosities, huh? gonna get in sea dasher octopus interesting So I could Let's do this first. So I actually want to kill the octopus, right? This will give us a copy. So this is a this is a draw two. Um, sure. So if we let this die, I think we actually are to the point where we want to... get rid of everything but the problem is to yeah let's go ahead and let it happen all right so we do get to draw a card this is it was a odd line of play right We are going to draw a lot of cards here. You have another one? No way. Pay three. See what we draw. Oh, go land. There we go. Okay, so I don't want to tap any of my artifacts.
All right, we're going to take five. All right, one time, deck, one time. There we go. That's a good one. Ooh. That is a really good one. And then we get to follow it up again with another one. This is going to get tapped down forever. And then we could steal it. I think that's good. I think we are good. Virtually tapping them down. Yeah, we've got plenty of mana. We got five. Count it out. Count it out. Oh, and how lucky was that? That we hit that and not the creature? Oh, that victory felt good. It felt good. Next game. Triple R get. All right, we're gonna mulligan. Couldn't keep that hand this hand either, but we have to. Three land we have to keep. Um, I think we get rid I think we just have to get rid of Kiora Best of Sea God here. Make them think we're playing that mono blue deck that we just faced. They're on mono red. Uh, brainless opponents here. No, we don't know that. They're probably on Gruel. Bad draw Gruel. Oh, Rakdos. 3 gig. So I do think if we hit a land next turn that comes into play untapped, I'm pretty sure I'm going to copy a land. Okay. So I do think we're going to copy a land. That gets us uh, to six faster, potentially. So if we draw another land, we can we can just play Haphazard Bombardment while our opponent's over there doing who knows what. Like, legitimately nothing. Well, not this turn, but next turn. That would have been good, you know, a couple turns ago. I do feel like as soon as we land this, we're probably going to win. Just because our opponent legitimately has not done anything. And I think we go after their black man uh, first. I'm more scared of, like, hand disruption. Um... Removal. Roxa. It's your thing. They just drew that Croxa. Lotus Field doesn't really do us any, any good right now. Maybe we just go and draw a card here. Okay. Then we can... Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm okay with this, right? I don't want to just play one of these, to be 100% honest with you. Um, oh, that's kind of hurt. Because I do want to be able to uh, combo it with with the QR best of sea god. Okay. That doesn't really do anything. They they were just on a really bad draw. Alright, so we have a hundred percent chance of hitting one of their black manny. But it's kind of irrelevant, right? They still have enough to cast Croxa. Alright, we're still a couple cards away from seeing Croxa in action. They could attack with their Judith, potentially put another card in the graveyard, but I don't think that's something. Alright, so cast cast the light up the stage. They are okay. I was I was gonna be very surprised if that was gonna be the case. Oh wow, that's kind of that was a kind of a good draw for us. I don't really care about any of those. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. That's back to back cures, and you're not really doing anything. And I mean, you just have to chalk that up to our opponent having a bad draw. All right, well, good game. All right, keeping the streak alive. Three wins. I do. I do kind of want to know. I would really like to have seen our last opponent's deck. I mean, they just drew all of the cards in there. So, gosh, we just can't keep this, right? Uh, we can definitely. So, while we do want this card, we do have to put it back. I'm going to try to ramp into this bombardment, get that online, hopefully copy it. You really never know what you're playing against. The mono white, a okay, white black. Get to do it again next turn. Love to draw just two land in a row. Right? Or Blood Sun this turn and then Lotus Field the following turn. Ugh, Esper. Ugh. Mind Stone. 100% Mind Stone. Really? Okay. Well. I do think I would have taken the Mind Stone in that situation. We were very far away from hitting 6 mana. So we could copy the Narset and start hitting cards, but I think we just want to hit our land drops here. This is going to be a hard match. All right. I have just the trick for this. Yep, yep. I think the only chance we have, honestly, is if we hit a land. I mean, they know we have this, so. Into the shadow. 
Oh, and we just draw another one immediately. So the good news is, is we can actually deal with this. But, I mean, they're on the, we're actually drawing land plan, while we're on the, we can't draw land plan. I mean, that's, it's not really doing anything. gonna go ahead and get rid of this that really lets us see that they don't have a counter spell in their hand I guess we go after blue mana uh not the one we wanted to hit. Probably the one we deserved to hit. Sure thing. They just sacrificed Ashiok to bounce that. They probably have another hand disruption spell. If not, I I don't understand. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I'm I'm, uh, I'm very surprised there, right? Because I don't care about Kaya. We have what, five cards? One, two, three. I, I guess we just go after Kaya because it's a plank, right? Your thing. What's our best draw? Uh, definitely not that. So this will allow us to draw a card at the end of their turn. We can't do it during our turn. We have six cards. They get to hit us for three down to 11. We're not activating Kaya. I do think we... I do think we draw one. Oh, that's probably our best draw. I mean, yeah, they, they definitely get to Wrath us. But then we potentially get to steal Kaya? And I think stealing Kai is actually really good against them. Uh oh. Or we could steal Liliana? I don't hate that either. So I don't want I don't actually want to feed any more cards into them. Yeah, they're uh, they're gonna scoop. I don't know. I don't think they should have scooped there. I I do think they actually had a legitimate chance at winning. Um, they were gonna be able to minus Kaya hit us for seven, uh, and then potentially we'd have to try to kill them with Liliana before that. But I understand why they probably conceded because we get to steal something, and they they probably had the mindset that they couldn't win. But I, I do think they were actually on the line to win. Uh, even though that was a win for us, uh, technically, uh, I do think our opponent would win. All right, we just need to keep these going, right? Just need to keep these wins coming. 
would like to get our combo online, though. For real, for real. All right, we're going first. No, I can't keep this. Um, we can keep this, and I think we can get rid of that. Orvar, what is our opponent playing? Mill. Oh, well, that was actually a pretty fortunate, right? What kind of crazy? Ah, uh, so they're gonna, they're probably gonna Genesis ultimatum us at some point. We just have to do this now. I don't even want to mess with that, right? Like, just be gone. Be gone, crabs. I wish we kind of could have hit that as well. They don't, they don't have a third land either. So that's good news. Let's try to get lucky. We did not. Um, next turn... Oh, that's unfortunate. Oh, that that was lucky for lucky for them. So they actually just got themselves out of that. I really thought that Fable Passage hit was going to be really good. Right here, right here, buddy. Oh, we got super lucky there. Hold Lotus Field there was so lucky. Lotus Cobra. I'll take a land hit, though. Now, if we can draw one of our... our instants... Okay, Azusa's not really going to do much, because I don't feel like they have much land in their hand, right? Um. Oh my gosh, I feel so... Fortunate that we're drawing these back to back. Don't want to go after the Fabled Passage because, again, Fabled Passage does nothing. That was a huge hit right there. Yep. J Ben, thanks for the game. Uh, we were actually gonna get we were getting online pretty good there. We got lucky with that Lotus Field draw, and sometimes, sometimes that happens. Let's go. Let's get it. Tomaharv. I do feel like the uh, the consistency of this deck is. I mean, it's not all there, but I feel like we're getting pretty lucky. So, as much as I really want to keep this because we have anger in our hand, we just can't. All right, we're going to keep this. You get it rid of. We'll time twist. You'll feel like it's the worst card in our hand. We're waiting for our opponent to figure out life. All right, let's go. Let's go. Temple of Silence. This could just be so many different decks, right? Slower control deck. So I really don't want to see Esper. I think our best draw here is either a Mythos or snow covered land. Hmm. Okay. They're on a aggro plan. Interesting. Black white knights?
Abzan. Abzan. It's okay. Okay. Yeah, so we're gonna... We're gonna get this down, we're gonna hope to draw land, and we're gonna hope to just cure our best sea god, and just outpace them. Right, but with them being on Abzan, the likelihood that they have the new binding is probably pretty high. Um, okay. This makes two twos. Land, perfect draw. All right. We have a blocker for now. I will block this guy. I don't know, might just block the river, but I don't think it matters. I guess it's all gonna just depend on what they do with their mana this turn. If Cure or Best of Sea God stays on the board, I think we 100% win. Pretty good. I think now we're in a position to where we have to block this. Okay. Interesting. I don't really feel like this interaction should work. Like, you should not be able to sacrifice this for no creatures. Okay. Do it again. See, that, that one you should be able to sack, obviously, because you... I targeted another creature, but so we are making taps. Am I sure? Hundred percent sure. And, you know, I'm going to draw a card here. We draw a... We would have drawn, like, a time reversal. That would have been pretty good. Or, uh, sorry, Tefiri's time twist. That would have been good. But next turn, I mean, we're, we're presenting lethal here. All of his creatures are going to get tapped down. This is non-tokens? Yep, so you don't get to draw any cards for the tokens dying. I have a wrath here. So we would have to binding this and then, and then have a creature. Okay, so. Outlook not so good. Good game, Tomaharv. Tomaharv, great game. That was pretty close. I don't know, really know what we would have done with the with the uh, Mythos there. I think, in all likelihood, had he played a creature, I think what we do is we binding, like copy the binding, and then kill this. Um, but yeah, that's just just all she wrote. So let's talk about this deck. All right, guys. Wow, what was that? We went six and one. Uh, we didn't actually get to do our 
uh, crazy combos, but we did get to do plenty of copying of QR best sea gods. I've had haphazard environments. We got to see multiple um, ways to just keep replenishing the counters. And that was one thing I, I felt like I forgot to hit on during the introduction is that it's great because haphazard bombardment it's going to essentially run itself out of counters, right? Um, you know, you're going to put four counters on their permanents. They're going to, we're only going to be able to destroy three of them because again, it triggers only if there's two or more counters uh, among permanents. And then what you can do is you can just blink this back into play and um, it just resets it. So, you know, maybe we don't have a way to copy it. Uh, you know, with, with any of these, we maybe we don't draw another one, but hey, at the same time, we just recopy, start it over, start hitting those those permanents again. Still still doing work. So yeah, this this deck's a lot of fun. Um it's it's not um I don't feel like it's competitive, but I do feel like you can actually steal some wins with this. Um I do I do think that if you do have four or uh orvars, you do want to play four orvars. Um, I just didn't have the fourth Orvar, uh, and I do feel like since this deck does focus on having that, it's probably uh, important to play that fourth copy. So um, what I would what I would probably do in this deck um, once I once I do get my or my fourth Orvar, I will go ahead and uh, probably just drop one Kiora Best of Sea God and put in the fourth Orvar. Um, but yeah, uh, I really feel like this deck. Again, not super competitive, but it will definitely steal more wins um, than you expect. And your opponents just sometimes can't deal with these bombs. And when you're dropping Haphazard Bombardment super early and then following it up with like a Kiora Best of Sea God, your opponent just does not. So it is, it's it's quite surprising. And and again, every time you play Hyphazard Bombardment um, or or a deck that runs Blood Sun Lotus Field, you are going to run the risk of obviously not getting the combo that you're wanting. But sometimes you get super lucky, as you saw in some of our games, where you actually draw the Lotus Field right on time and you just get there. But yeah, again, this deck's a lot of fun. I love weird, crazy interactions like this. There's still a, I've still got a ton of ideas uh, brewing in my head. And again, I, I'm I'm trying to find a time to actually just throw out, you know, just film a whole bunch of videos in a row. That way I can, you know, get some constant uh, content running out for you guys. But right now, um, just doing it as I have the free time because work is so busy. It's getting busier. So, uh, but yeah, if you enjoyed the video and you enjoy the channel and you're not yet subscribed, uh, all I ask, please like, comment, subscribe, uh, check out all the cool links down below, the Discord, the Patreon, and the Twitch link. And again, if you're not familiar, we're actually trying to start doing some, possibly like some Among Us on Saturdays, I think. So if you want to be a part of that, join the Discord. We have a uh, Imposters channel. So check that out. You will be a part of our uh, next Imposters game. So, all right, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Please, everybody, please stay safe. We'll see you next time. Remember, this channel would not exist without such amazing viewers and subscribers. Thank you so much for interacting with the channel and helping grow the community. And a very big special thank you to the Patreons listed here for supporting the channel.